Hey everybody, Neil here. Welcome to my channel, The Rider Guider. Thank you for joining me today. Um, we're going to be talking about the Yamaha Tenere and accessorising. And I'm no different to anybody else in relation to this particular bike. I think anybody who buys one, man, boy, woman, we make a list and the list is full of accessories we intend to buy. I'm no different. And I've got here, for show you, my little list. I've added quite a lot of stuff to the bike already. And then I've created this list later. I've just got my engine guards. My, what's that say? I'm doing it in reverse. Chain guide, that's fitted. The toolbox I fitted the other day. And the rest of the stuff are things I'm going to need in the near future. I want some new tyres as well. I'm going to go away from the standard ones. We've got a big adventure ride coming up end of February. Now, uh, one thing you won't see on there is the mono seat rack or the mono seat. And I'll show you one of them. And the reason it isn't on there is because, well, it didn't really interest me. I didn't want one or I didn't think I wanted one. And I went, as I said, I've just got my engine guys. I'm going to be fitting them this afternoon. The OE Yamaha ones finally arrived. Um, Oh, let's go back through that list a bit further. Look, uh, toolbox, GPS, I'm going to get like a Garmin Zumo or something, whatever it is. I don't have to look that up. Ties said, uh, adventure type mirrors. I'm going to get some that are adjustable and fold in a little bit easier. Uh, USB 12 volt job, I'm going to get one of them. I've got space for it on the right hand side of the uh, dashboard there. I'm going to get it wired up with a what do they call it it's not a cigarette light and it's not a usb i'm actually going to get the heller type and it's like a, a cigarette lighter thing but it's much more a solid fit they're a great 12 volt socket they don't come loose um foot pegs i'm going to get a little bit bigger not suffering too much without with the standard ones but i'm told i'll be able to get a lot more control and a better platform for my big boots that i've just bought uh heater grips don't laugh, come the winter in at South Australia, it gets bitter. Um, Acropovic exhaust, that's a grand here, and let's talk about pronunciation. Apparently it's, uh, it's a Krapovich. Now, I like that because it says crap in it. Uh, so the Krapovich exhaust I'll be getting, and some more RNG protection. I've got the rear spindle slider, and I've got like a big foot that goes up on this side stand. I've got some plans for the front slider, uh, axle slider, and the engine protection from RNG. Just like everywhere at the moment, the shortage of stock, when it gets produced, sent to the dealers, or put online, it's getting snapped up. And that's not surprising. Yamaha is selling a lot of these bikes, as we know. Now, a Krapovich. Let's also talk about something else. I've been saying decals and I've been reliably informed it's decals unless you're from Canada. Um, I don't know, maybe Ryan F9 would listen in and go, yeah, it's actually decals. I've, 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 it must be a Yorkshire thing as well. I've always said decals and I'm current Mrs. Rider Guide has gone, no, it's decals, you plonker. I don't know. The other thing that a lot of people are saying wrong, now this is an interesting one now, if you're getting a Royal Enfield, Himalayan, you will actually be more worshipped in India than an elephant, if you pronounce it right. All my life I've been Himalayan, saying Himalayan, I've been wondering if one day I could go to the Himalayas. Not the case, no. Himalayan is the correct pronunciation. Who knew? You don't go to the Himalayas, you go to the Himalayas. Any Indians that are watching, can you fill me in on the Himalayas? Or the Himalayas? Or the, is the bike the Himalayan? I don't know. I'll tell you what to do. Put a comment in and uh, let me know if it's Himalayan. Put a thumb in a comment and say, yes, it's Himalayan. If it's Himalayan, give it a thumbs down. Let's see what results we get. Pronunciation, who knew? Anyway, today, 
What did I have on the list? Yes, I didn't have one of these. Now, this is the mono seat. Basically, replaces that bad boy, the original mono seat. Now, on a side note, if you've not seen my seat hack, I'll put a link. Um, it's had like 12 and a half thousand hits, so that's rather splendid, thank you. Uh, but do look it up, the seat hack. Every 10 or 8 owner needs to know the seat hack. And yeah, that, my bike looks mint, but here's proof that I do actually ride it in the dust and in the dirt. I really do need to clean the underneath of it. Now, let's compare these while we're on screen. Look at that. Look what you gain. Look at the depth compared to that. That's full of sponge. You've got more height and you've got extra storage. That, for me, is a bonus. It isn't just a rack that replaces the rear seat, okay? It is also affording us a little bit of extra space for equipment. You can possibly get, well, I tell you what, my challenge, and I'm going to try and do this, I'm going to try and find an air compressor, 12 volt air compressor, that would fit underneath the, the back seat. That would be a cracking bit of an addition. Look, you've got the strap here for a tool roll or whatever. I bought the toolbox, as you know. But this, I think, affords quite a bit of space underneath the seat. There's the space under the seat itself, plus the depth of that, which is I'll tell you now, it's probably, as realistically, I think it's probably going to be 40 mil. Um, if I can find a compressor, 12 volt compressor, even if it's stripped down to the bare knuckles to fit under there, utilizing that space and the space under the seat that's there already, that would be rather splendid. That properly is a solid piece of kit. It's got aluminium, and plastic it just replaces and uses the same mechanism for installation and it's quite a solid piece of kit it's not light you feel like you're getting something for your money i'm not going to discuss price it depends where you are in the world as to what it will cost you and it's all relative to what you earn um but it is a yamaha part and it was something i didn't really consider getting until i was at the dealers and he showed me i went oh bollocks I'll get one so I did now the other selling point for me was the fact that I don't like wearing a rucksack and I've been looking and it's potluck you can't look I'm sure I'm not alone the, the Tenere owners out there will all agree I'm sure and anybody who rides a bike it's hard to buy luggage the dealers are reluctant to buy a lot of stocking because we're all unique our bikes are all different we are um, pretty specific in what we want and it's hard for a dealer to buy everything in. So we end up researching online, buying stuff and quite often, more, than, more, more often than not, might not get exactly what we want and then we start having to adapt it, make it fit. It don't quite look right and you end up a little bit disappointed. So if you go, do go to a dealer's and find something that's specifically, oh, that'll do it, I might better make that work. It's lucky if you're in a situation there, then you still can't find anything. As a T7 owner, you can draw on somebody else's potluck, which is what I have got to show you today. I bought this. Now, this is from a company called Moto Dry. Now, let me show you. Uh, you get your gubbins, etc. One thing, obviously, it jumps out at you is that little sign there. Now, I don't know whether they're available elsewhere. There should be a website, but the, it's Moto Dry, one word. And they are Australian, the Australian motorcycle luggage brand. Now, the word there, of course, is brand. There you go, website, motodry.com.au. And there is a phone number, 1300 885 355, right? at the bottom of that sheet there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Now, of course, well worded, luggage brand. It's about as Australian as I am. Um, not a negative, but if you open it up, what does it say there? Made in Indonesia. Look, I think if it was Australian made, it'd be twice the money. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, what appealed to me, of course, is its simplicity. It is 
quite well built. It's robust, it's got the it's got them like them type of waterproofing sealed zips. It's well built, it's that's the underneath of it, covered in crumbs from my bench top, my kitchen bench top. Bit of carbon fibre-esque um, trim, but this it's all double oh, it's well well the, the, the material's really strong, it's rubber there, strong nylon there. Um, yeah, look, it's a solid piece of kit. I'm just going to go slowly down and I'll come back to these in a minute. I've walked through there. That, in that zip there, you open that up and you pull out the waterproof cover. Now, I think it's splash proof as it is. If you want to fully waterproof it, it's got a built-in cover as well. Look, and it's got a bit of reflection as well from the back. But that's not the whole thing. This is not why it appealed to me. What really appealed to me was the fact that it fits lovely on the back of the mono seat and it's a really good fit it's almost the same shape okay now it's got the four mounting points now i've taken off the straps because of this, it comes with straps and they are the nylon straps with a plug-in top and bottom and then you just pull it tight fine but I found that if that was the case I was taking up too much space underneath the seat um, underneath the mono, the mono um, area and this this space I want to utilize I didn't want it full of strap um, and you had to tuck it away somewhere you couldn't really cut it down much and what's the point in having the straps everywhere they just look untidy if I can utilize that space for something else I will so what I've done I've been to Bunnings or you beat B&Q or wherever you want to go in the UK if you're the case or wherever you are in the world and I've bought myself various bits and bats and I've, I'll show you when it's on but I can just hook it on to these here now it's got these holes this is a metal part of the frame and I've got a situation now where I can just clip it on and it's rock solid um, I think it'll evolve a bit more but because I've been able to do that I've, been, I've managed to um, release and free up all that space which the straps were taking up underneath it so it really fits so what I'm going to do um, is basically I'll just show you from above here actually yeah I can show you directly from above as to how it how it looks and fits and it's quite splendid I'll just um, do that if we go to here I'll show you down the house in the kitchen that's it on top and you can see the shape of it it just sits nicely on top and get it centralized and once you've got it strapped down which i'll show you on the bike in due course it's a win you've got yourself a decent bit of kit now what what i like about it is it's easy on and off i can use it every day to and from work it's oh it extends as well it's got that uh, it'll go up and down so you can you've got an inbuilt zip and it'll go higher i'll show you on on the bike in a minute so you can actually probably about i think it's 22 liters let's have a look see what it says on here um 20 expandable to 27 liters so it can house a helmet which is pretty good um as i said i'll just go through these features the 3m scotch light reflectives uh, mesh internal storage compartment on sitting side of the lid um and a built-in waterproof rainstorm cover which i mentioned what do they call this heavy duty reinforced 1680 denier material pu backed stylish design two-year warranty look um the only things i don't like is the straps and i'm replacing them with something a bit more a bit more mechanical and it will be much more useful but that as i say is the moto dry check it out on their website uh, again no yeah, i'll tell you what i paid for it i paid 100 dollars for it um, I think it was retail 120 I get a little bit of discount from the dealer because uh, I've got, I got my tenor here there and that's it so let's go fit it to the bike and I'll show you around it and uh, that'll include the mono seat and of course the the, the bag itself all right thank you see you at the bike so there it is on the bike I'm just going to quickly show you the extended bit if you've got that zip there and 
And what that affords is the ability to increase the height. Yeah, possibly we could get a helmet in there. Not that I'm the type of person to leave a helmet in it. I like that. That's a nice bit. And that, as I said, that gives it 27 litres. Now, as you can see, I've removed the straps, as I said. They don't go underneath and take up space underneath the mono seat now. I've been to the hardware store and I'm working on utilising some clips and some fittings to make sure that I can keep it nice and secure. It is absolutely rock solid at the moment um, and it will be usable like this, but it will evolve, as I said. Let me zip that back up. I'll just quickly show you, get the other zips out of the way. So that's the uh, extender, fully zipped up. Let's go back around here. We'll open up again the inside. Look, it's so easy to use and you get an idea what it's all about. That's nothing unusual to other types of luggage systems, I suppose. But uh, certainly fits well on the mono rack and without a doubt it would fit underneath the rear seat just fine. And of course, if that was the case, you'd use the straps because you wouldn't be utilising that space underneath that uh, rear seat anyway. But in relation to the mono rack, definitely recommend it along with this from Moto Dry. So far, so good. I think that'll get a lot of use out of that. So that's your lot for now. That bit of luggage will be fine for day trips and also to and from work. It'll get a lot of use, as I said, and I think it would be a great addition, especially if you include the mono rack. I think that's a, a, a quite a sweet thing. And the good thing is you don't have to take anybody in the back then, can have a lift. Now, nah, mate, no back seat. That's got to be a bonus, hasn't it?